Previously, on The Next Internet Millionaire, the day started with Thor and Jason sparring over ethical issues. In the classroom, the final four discover the secrets of blogging and Web 2.0 from Dave Taylor. Then they put their skills to work by raising money for Hearts and Hands International using a blogathon. While Thor and Jason were able to set aside their differences for the sake of the task, it was not enough, as Charles and Jamie were able to drive web traffic from a number of different sources. In the judgment room, Thor and Jason hashed out their differences one last time. In the end, Jason asked to be eliminated from the competition, and Joel granted his request. Now down to the final three, they can no longer rely on their teammates to pull them through. Who will make it to the final round, and who will go home tonight? Will it be Thor, Jamie, or Charles? Stay tuned to find out on this episode of The Next Internet Millionaire. adrenaline um, you know I'm, I'm so overtired I'm, I'm so overloaded with information and tired <laughs> I want to sleep I need to stay alert and that's that's one of the biggest things I'm so focused on, on the competition and meeting the criteria of the competition and satisfying the demands that have been placed on me that I don't always see the stress is getting to people being tired is getting to people so you never know what's going to happen. I don't think that that's going to play to Jamie's strength. She's never had her own business. She's never uh, felt the pressure of an entrepreneurial venture. She doesn't She doesn't have any framework to even bring that into a paradigm that she can understand how much stress it's under when you have people counting on you for their incomes and counting on you for their, their personal success. You know, my body's been being pushed to the limit, but you know what, that's okay, that's good, because in business, that's what happens. I mean, in life, you have to be able to push through tough times and you have to show that you can be on top regardless of what situations are being thrown at you. She's never had to experience that, and I think that that's gonna give me an advantage. Thor and Charles are really different, so I'm not sure who exactly would be my biggest competition. Charles Trippy is my toughest competition at this point. I think that Thor and Charles and myself, we all have very different strengths. The only advantage that I have over Charles is that I think Joel understands that I have a grasp on the enormity of the opportunity at hand. I'm gonna win this thing, man. I'm gonna take all of them out, one by one. Snipe them all. You're going down. I want to be a millionaire. So I can buy lots of Slurpees for everybody, like I said I would. I think Charles is more like me in the sense of creativity, but he leans more on the edge of videos. Um, I have more of the writing um, and presentation. Thor has presentation and technical, so I think we're almost like a bit of a rainbow. To be honest, I've been outperformed in the last two challenges by Charles, and you know, if those two beat me in the next challenge, um, it doesn't matter what kind of strategic advantage I have, I'm gone. So if Thor won, you know, hey, I guess that's what Joel's looking for. If Charles won, I guess that's, again, what he's looking for. I might as well. I'm here now. I mean, that one more day. I might as well go for the last day and get kicked off on the last day. That'd be a morning. I'd rather get kicked off two weeks ago. So, yeah, I might as well go all the Like uh, someone said earlier this week, you don't have to outrun the bear. You just have to be faster than the slowest person. And that's, that's a real bad way to look at it. But right now, I'd really like to outrun the bear, but if I can't, you know, second place is looking attractive. I don't want to get eliminated from the show. I want to go into the final two, and there's one day left that I have that I can prove that I can do it. There's one opportunity left, and if I don't do it, there's not going to be a chance to. Our speaker today grew a high-tech biz by 20-fold and helped to sell it is a public company for $18 million. This gentleman has spoken around the world. I'm glad he's joining us here in the next Internet Millionaire stage. Please give a warm welcome to my friend, Mr. Perry Marshall. I'm gonna talk about guerrilla marketing today and I'm gonna cover just a, a huge range of things. There's a, there's a very important thing in advertising and marketing, uh, which I would call the factor of primal emotions. You know, people are driven and motivated by a lot of things 
and you can get very complicated and very esoteric about what makes people tick. But really, people are motivated by very simple core emotions. So here's the latest issue of Cosmo. Now, I want to explain the psychology of a Cosmo cover. Uh, first of all, I want you to understand that more work goes into the cover of this magazine than anything that goes inside of it. And this is one of the most exquisitely engineered pieces of marketing every single month, and you can study it and you can learn from it. Now, what is right in the center of this magazine? Don't mince any words. What is like right in the center of this magazine? Her chest. A pair of Okay, now, why are they there? Because nobody cannot look at them. So that you will read the headlines that are next to them. I learned a lot from Perry, and uh, I wasn't exactly sure what he was gonna talk about before he came, so I was glad it was a lot of stuff I could relate to, and that I think it would, that would help me, so it was good. The very best advertising always appeals to primal motives. That is driving everything that goes on in marketing. Now, it may be it may be hidden or spun in a very delicate or genteel or friendly way, but you're still going after primal emotions. You guys are going to get an assignment today, okay? And you're going to have to go sell somebody on something, okay? And whether they act on you or not, it's not if you can give them some like really neato, sophisticated thing that they think is a neat idea, they're gonna act on what you're trying to sell them if and because you tapped into primal emotions. It was great hearing him talk up there because it was funny, a lot of the stuff he's talking about is stuff we already do. My customers in Lincoln come up to me and say, wow, how did you know that's all I wanted to do with my computer? You have to know your market, he's absolutely right. Those are the, that's the customer that we sell to. Another. Another big factor in guerrilla marketing is the use of publicity. Newspaper reporter, magazine reporter, somebody like that, they're waiting and looking for interesting things to write about and talk about. All you have to do is make what you do interesting and wrap a story around it and a reporter will do your publicity for you. I was sitting there and he was talking, I was, I'm hoping and praying that uh, the show is signed to deal with Best Buy and that we're going to go into the Best Buy computer section and sell computers because I will smoke everybody in there. We're probably going to have to do something outside the complex. Complex. Yeah, I don't know, I'll probably sell something. I think we're going outside after lunch today. They mentioned maybe bring your flip flops instead of wearing those heels. So I think we're going outside, I'm wondering if we're going to be selling <laughs> so. so I think a lot of what he talked about today, we're going to be thrown into something we don't know what we're going into. And no matter whether it's myself or Charles or Jamie, uh, each one of us is going to have something working against us. I'm hoping it's me and that is the last one standing, but you know, there's three really good people out there. So, you know, I think it's going to depend what the challenge is. But uh, I, yeah, I doubt that they're going to give us anything that's going to play to any one person's advantage. I think the best thing I can hope for right now is I don't end up selling high heels in, uh, in Von Mar or something. That's, uh, that's probably one of the best things I can hope for at this point. I'm not exactly sure what's coming, but uh, we'll see. See. Today's execution challenge is going to be an individual immunity challenge. One person will win today's challenge. The other two people will be joining me in the judgment room tonight where one of you will be eliminated. One type of guerrilla marketing is called grassroots marketing. This is where you use techniques such as word of mouth and free publicity to get people to take action. Just one mile away from here is the Larimer County Fair. Tonight, they are gonna have a showing of a free movie. Your task today is going to be to hand out tickets to people at the fair and get them to attend this free movie. We're gonna collect all the tickets and we'll count them up and based on who they came from, the person who has the most tickets is gonna be the winner of this immunity challenge. Grassroots marketing campaigns frequently are made better by groups of volunteers who mobilize and go out to help build 
the buzz on an event that's taking place. In internet marketing, we call them affiliates. Now, we had a little difficulty in rounding up the right affiliates for you guys, but I believe we have them here now. Turn around, please. Welcome back, Alison, Laura, Christine, Debbie, Nico, Jason, Carly, Steve, and Big Jason. Much to the surprise of the remaining three, we had sequestered each of the eliminated contestants to a private mountain retreat in Breckenridge, Colorado, where they played and networked until it was time for us to bring them back. Hey everybody at the next internet millionaire.com, welcome to the Loser Lodge, but it's for the real winners. And I want to express my extreme gratitude to Mr. Rick Raditz. Oh man, this is a wonderful place. I'm, I'm, I'm sad that I only get to stay here for one night. I was like, sweet, Rick Raditz, that's the audio generator guy. The first thing I did when I got here was went and got a massage. And I have to say, laying there on the massage table, I didn't think it was so bad I'd been eliminated. <laughs> Things were a lot more relaxed here and a lot of business got done. It was really interesting to sit around a bunch of people with a bunch of computers and everybody into the same thing. Having the opportunity to have an all-day mastermind session with Rick Raditz was just awesome. I'd say five or six people have been asking me to help them with their blog. Steve's been helping everybody with MySpace. Uh, Nico's been helping a few people with video. And I've probably learned more here than I have throughout the entire process of Next Internet Millionaire because we were all able to form our own ideas and, you know, share with each other what we all knew. And that was very exciting to be able to sit down one-on-one -on -one and figure out what everyone else does to make money. It's been a great experience. It's, I've learned loads and I'm sure that when I go home I'm going to take a lot with me. But yeah, we've been doing a lot of networking, a lot of good training and everything, and a lot of hanging out. Here we are in Breckenridge, Colorado at the Breckenridge Golf oh. Club. We're in the Breckenridge Pro Shop, and we're going to go hit some balls. All right, I'm hitting that guy in the white. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Can I say I think you might be golf retarded? I'm left so I can't. We hired a full-time house mom to take care of the contestants and keep an eye on them. And it's a good thing we did, otherwise things might have gotten a little out of control. There was a little pushing going on onto me having a relationship with a certain somebody. Me and Laura Martin, <laughs> who knows? I've told her several times she can smack me upside the head. That makes her feel better. It's kind of hard not to notice romance. Because one night, Steve and Jason did this little notebook scene that got a little out of hand. Legs were in the air, there was some hugging, some like embraces going on and everything. And a lot of heavy panting. There's some stuff that would have been interesting that could have happened. Yeah, Jason keeps trying to make out with me. Oh yeah. That kind of gets on my nerves. It's been crazy up in here. So we'll see what happens. Each one of you is going to get three affiliate partners. I'm going to start right here and we're going to pick teams. Thor, pick your first affiliate. Christine. Jamie. Nico. Jason. Laura. Steve. Anderson. Miss Carla. Debbie. Alison, come take your place over here. Regardless of which of the three of you wins, the top affiliate from the pool of nine is going to get a complimentary copy of my AdSense Premier course. The top of you three will also receive an AdSense Premier course as well as your immunity. Once you've got your tickets, you can gather together as a team and begin strategizing. I pooped my pants. I missed you so bad. I shrocked my pants. I get a shot before we left. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Looking forward to uh, kicking some ass. Hi. Can I get a couple of maps or schedules or something? All right. 
Hi, could you Hi. could you tell me where there's a movie tonight over the hedge that's airing? Can you tell me where that's going to air? No, I can't. The movie that's playing tonight, where about is it going to be? It's going to be down in this area here. Okay. So that way you can tell people where it's at. Brilliant. Yes, very nice. Okay, I'll see you soon. All right, thanks, Carly. A lot of people probably was like, oh, he got stuck with Carly. No, 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 that wasn't the case. I wanted Carly on my team. There's just something about that English accent, you know? Good to see you guys. Thank you very much. We'll see you tonight. Thank you. Thank you. When you're trying to give stuff away and someone comes up to you with an English accent, you know, you need an attention grabber. How many times at a, at a fair, at a county fair, do you hear an English accent? Are you doing anything tonight? Are you busy at all? Uh, we are going to be around here. Seriously, I mean, what does it happen, you know? No. Why would a person from England come all the way over here for a county fair? It doesn't happen. So, you know, it was great to have her out there giving them away because, excuse me. Um, are you doing anything tonight? No. Why come over here today? Because we got to bed very early. Maybe they have some kind of religion or something, but, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I feel sorry, sorry for the children. Oh, really? How early? Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> That's just so mean. Mean mummy. Uh -huh. Uh, you guys want the uh, free tickets to the movie tonight here at the fair? Do you guys get your free movie tickets for tonight? Yeah. Do you guys want free tickets for well, tonight? Yeah, we do. Okay. Actually. How many do you need? Oh yeah, two for them would be great. Okay. okay. Can I have two more for my daughter and wife? Of course. Here. One. Well, I picked Nico because when we did the popsicle challenge, Nico racked up a ton of money. So I thought, hey, he knows how to sell the kids and stuff. So we're hooking up instead of with all the kids with the vendors that are already gonna be here at the show to be able to go over and see it. So we got a new little angle. I'm giving away on top of it for my people that take tickets from me, a Costa Rica vacation drawing. Hi folks, welcome to the fair. We have a free movie tonight. We'd love to, but we can't because we got other plans tonight. Not so. a problem, enjoy the fair. I think I can just pretend like I'm working for the fair. Hi folks, welcome to the fair. Yay, I feel special. Do you need for your, let's try doing 4-H. Okay. We got free movie tickets from the who is the big fat carny guy selling cotton candy and the tattooed oaf like eating a turkey leg? I put it right on the floor in front. I'll make sure to, uh, the rock doesn't blow it. But it's right there. I put one for you. You're not going to be here tonight? Okay. They're not staying for it. Are we? No. Thanks. We're actually not going to be here. Oh, you're leaving? Okay. Because so I have to show lambs tomorrow morning, so. Alright. I've never heard of a picture like that before. You already got tickets? Awesome. Thanks, guys. If you put that information on there, they're going to be drawing for a $100 cash prize, a $50 cash prize, and a $25 cash prize. Oh, we already have yeah, yeah. You already have them? Yeah. Hey, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Charles based his strategy on the way I guess he promoted bands before. He, he felt that you need to stay locally or closer to where the event is happening. We put your wrap for money. $100, $50, or $25. We like money. Yes. So hot. Sweat rolling down my back, you got into my foot. Tonight? No. You can't go. Oh, okay. No? No. 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 This one for you. This one for you. I don't know. And one for you. Can you say thank you? Have you heard about the free movie? <laughs> then I want Everybody to down this house, so you might okay. want to go somewhere else. Sorry, it's the very access. Yeah, because this is starting to get saturated. It's completely like saturated. Because this is saturated. saturated. Yeah, I think we might need to go somewhere else. We need to go somewhere else. We're like saturated. Oh, we're totally saturated. The fair is pretty much saturated. Everyone here has tickets. We've hit just about everybody there is to hit. I think it's pretty full here. There is a mall right around the corner from here. What about going to the mall? Can we go to like the mall? Should we, we go, go to a mall? You want to go outside? Yeah, let's go somewhere else. Even though right at the beginning it became saturated very quickly with all the teams hitting up everybody and giving them free tickets, then all the teams kind of vanished and went off to different places, but we stayed there and so we kept getting that little slow influx of people that were coming in. So that was his strategy, just stay at the fairgrounds and just keep giving out the tickets there. Okay, so we're going to go to the radio station and we're going to try to announce them, you know, we're give away these free tickets. I took Laura because she has an awesome personality. She's extremely approachable and she's very friendly. So if we're gonna be giving something away to anybody, you want Laura on your team. Yeah, it's exciting to be back and to help out a fellow contestant. The only reason why I'm doing this is for Thor. Because I want him to win. Hello. I'm what are Casey. We, what are we doing? What are we doing? Um, talk to the girl at the front desk and uh, tell her to ask for Kramer or Bender because they're still upstairs. I'm sure they wouldn't mind showing you around the studio. Sure. But there's no chance to get on today. Really? Um, no chance to get on today. Okay. Oh! Sorry. Free. <laughs> Money. A hundred dollars. Chance. We got tickets. Thank you. 
It's around about eight o'clock. They sent me uh, alone to an indoor mall, so I was out there, you know, talking, creating relationships, seeing uh, getting people to come out. My name's Jason. My name's Katrina. My name's Jason. My name's Jason, by the way. My name's Jason, by the way. Oh, hi. Hey, everybody appreciates meeting me, shaking my hand, so let's keep doing it. My name's Jason, by the way. Hey, thank my name's you. Jason, by the way. Jason, what is? My name's Jason, by the way. Thank you. Sir, my name's Jason. Taylor. Eight o'clock at the fairgrounds. You have a chance to win hundred bucks. How's that sound? How fast can you do a palm reading? You've been put on this earth as a leader, someone in a strong position. It's the symbol of a roller coaster surrounds you through your past. Do you see anything about how soon that opportunity would present itself, roughly? Before 2008. We'll see if it's true. Well, I, I went in the teddy bear place, um, I went in a children's haircut place, and an uh, ice cream place. We got out of the uh, fairgrounds area uh, fairly quickly, and I asked Thor if it was okay if I went over to the mall. He said, yeah, sure. And so I got to the mall, as far as I know, before anybody else, and I was able to hit Build-A-Bear and a children's haircut place. But the best place of all was um, this place called Bounce, where it was just a room full of kids bouncing, <laughs> and the parents, um, you know, sitting around in lounge areas, and I asked the manager when I first got there, could I talk to the parents? And he absolutely said, yep, go for it. And um, I was able to get rid of a lot of tickets there. I think I'm just gonna stay and work this, work this strip. Work this strip. <laughs> Great, Christine. Grab Christine right off the bat. She and I bonded from day one on this set, and uh, we both trusted each other from day one. We both said, you know, if we're the last two people here, then we will begrudgingly turn upon each other. But it didn't work out that way, but when I had the opportunity to have her on my team, I know she'd work her heart out for me any day of the week, and that's exactly what she did. She came up with some great ideas. She probably moved more solid leads for us on those tickets today than anyone else on the team. I'm thinking that if we can get the people running the daycares to give away these tickets to the parents, we can leverage their existing relationships with the, with the parents. I'm gonna actually call them and ask them if they uh, would want to have any free tickets to give away, and we could send a runner over to drop them off. Sure. How many tickets should I send over with the runner? A hundred tickets? You really give that many away today? All right, well then uh, I will have a hundred tickets over there in about an hour. We found a daycare center. Uh -huh. They're gonna give away a hundred tickets today for the eight o'clock showing. Really? Nico's offering a, a trip to Costa Rica. The, the Costa Rica vacation thing we can, we can use. Oh, okay. Now everybody that goes will be entered into it, but the other teams don't know it. They won't know it. They won't be able to pitch it. We need to find out what his stipulations are so whoever does win, he gives them a free trip. It's a value of about $700. Lodging and, and activities for two days. Two days. Two days. How are you going to offer him a free trip? That's a good question. We have one. Well, that's kind of lame. And then he got all ticked off and all pissy. Yeah, well, he was the same way at the door. Whoever wins is going to get contacted and they're going to get a free trip to Costa Rica. I'm not sure exactly how they're doing it. Yeah, nobody knows exactly how it's done. So some of these people might be disheartened. You've got a uh, Costa Rica adventure package. It is real. This is not one of those scam deals. Some people, some people know how it's done. Yeah, you're offering what? Huh? I traded tickets with those guys and I stole them. <laughs> Bye. Hey, what? Wait, we know what you're doing, swapping out tickets and offering free Costa Rica. I'm not swapping out tickets. Two people told me that, oh yeah, we had tickets with an A on them and now we have different tickets. Not mine. He takes things very seriously, so. <laughs> and Just money. a simple swap, that's all it is. Huh. And they said they were offering um, a good, free right? trip to Costa Rica. Can do that? Yeah. Deception never hurts. Especially with Jason. Oh, I don't care. And Jason Martin Sounds already accused me of being a cheater twice now. We're not trading tickets, so you have to worry about they that. They said they that somebody did. What could be doing that? Huh. I just gave uh, 12 away to a whole big family over there. Are you serious? What would it take for them to change their 16 tickets for mine? So here's their 16 tickets. A1, huh? Sure you don't want a C1 ticket? Uh -huh. What would it take for me to trade out my tickets for yours? Oh, that's not right. <laughs> yeah. that, that would be undermined. Oh, well, here. Yeah. Do we have to have your tickets? Okay. Do you think that's devious and deceitful? Awesome. I still have my morals and I'm just trying to help my friend win. Hi, 1C. Oh, that's my group. Was this puncture holes in your tire? Oh, <laughs> Let's do it. The radio station Aww. didn't go so well because of FCC regulations. So we're going to go into Target. So, later. We're going to get some posters, poster boards, make a sign saying free movie tickets at the park and a chance to be on TV.
Okay, our new plan was, you can see, to uh, just advertise ourselves like this. Tickets! Tickets, anyone? Oh, I feel like such a tool. Woo! Go wait, girlfriend! Wait. Excellent. Hello? Do you have tickets left? Yes, we do. Okay, do you know how, about how much? 50%, 25, 100? Uh, 25%. For, beautiful, we got we got them gone. So as soon as you get here, we'll take off and get rid of them. I'll send you the menu. Okay, cool. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, bye. <laughs> I don't know what they did, but they have 25% of their tickets left out of two bundles. Uh, I'm with the uh, the Larimer County Fair, and we are actually, uh, we've got a whole bunch of free tickets to see over the hedge. How many children do you guys serve there? Would you have a need for, do you think they'd have a need for any kind of tickets like that? We've got movie tickets for you. Okay. There's a hundred of them there. Are you sure you don't need more or less? No. All right. Sure. We're going to see if we can get the uh, manager of this awesome Walmart store to uh, put an announcement on their PA. Walmart was my favorite. I went to the food court. <laughs> There is a lot of people coming in the food court, um, and a fun story about the people at Walmart. Well, actually, we went to the Walmart, and a bunch of cops came after us. I walked back into the toy department, and I was so busy um, giving moms tickets for their kids, and they were so excited about it that um, they had to call me on the loudspeaker to come, to come because they got kicked out. The police kicked them out, and, and Steve told me that um, the police were going to come after me, that I better get out of there. That's a negative, guys. We got our three no's. So I'm going to find my team, and we're going to get lost before they call the police on us. Hey, guys. Yeah, I thought I was gone, but I'm back. I'm back, back, back. Look at these people. They think we're crazy. These, these people are tough. <laughs> they don't want to work with you or nothing. No, they don't they want no free off. vacation. Can you come to see me? I like it. Risky, and I like some pork, some chicharrones, and all that good stuff. Sam, Sam, chick, 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 chick. What are you looking at over there? We're going to have pizza, we're going to have pizza, even though they got brisket over there. They think you're crazy. No, you're crazy. No, you're crazy. Hey! I think we hit up all the entry points. Uh, everyone else was trying to do these creative things, which is okay, but I mean, when we're hitting the entry point, it doesn't matter if they're creative beyond that, because we already got them. So they can be creative and doing handstands and stuff, but we got them when they came in, so. We're trying to get them coming over. Instead of uh, everybody was canvassing the parking lots and catching people coming in, um, I went out to the entrance and we were stopping cars in the road uh, at the main entrance of the gate and uh, you know giving them tickets before anybody else got to them. So hello, Hi are you going to the fair? Yes. You guys head up to the fair? Yep. You guys going to the the, uh, the fair? No, we have a booth. That's okay. You guys going to the fair? Yep. You guys going to the fair? Are you going to the fair? 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 Go to the fair. We're doing a, uh, a free um, cash giveaway in Costa Rica vacation package. That's false advertising. You're like Nico, promising in Costa Rica. And a chance. They think they're so cool. They're so devious. That's who they are. They just play girls. Play them. This is my new beta that I got from Stephanie's Goldfish, the carnival booth, for being cute. What do you think? There you go. No, you're fine. Just give those tickets away for me. Whoa! I'm doing a joint venture with K99, Colorado's best country music station. Gave them some of the things and uh, the tickets and they're going to give them out as well while I walk around and advertise for them. Fish is going to die. So why do they want some donkeys? We have a couple of jackasses seen right here in these bright yellow green signs. Me and Laura, I would say we definitely just, you know, we rock out. We rocked it today. <laughs> we need like cleaner water. But we're very, very annoyed with Jamie for going and copying our idea and Laura's face looks much better, not that I've seen Jamie's yet, but that was a very low move. Yeah, I've never had my face painted before. Really? Ever <laughs> in my whole life. <laughs> and it's all about the person as well. And Laura's a very like happy, sweet person that you know naturally attracts people. So you you do have to have a nice smile. I wasn't face faking too. it. Now I look like people need to be buying tickets for over the head. Would you like a ticket for over the head? So you can't just have the face paint without the smile. It's not going to work. By this point, I just felt like, hey, let's just. 
incentives and go sell these tickets and everyone had ideas and we just went wherever. So I wasn't really the leader, I was just part of the team. Whatever I'm doing is going to be really good. Oh, and I'm not, I'm not oh I, I, I'm just saying, yeah, not a big deal. All right. I don't care. Man. No, you sound like you care. No, I'm just, I just want to let you know that we know that I knew you guys oh, okay. were swapping out tickets. No, but I'm not swapping out tickets. Okay. And how, how are you giving them a free uh, Costa Rica trip? I'm donating it. How, though? Where? When? So, like, that's going into the pot there? Sure. So then we can offer that, too, then? That I don't know. This used to be my pal. He don't like me no more. I don't know why. Stop. Oh. Your things really weird. I'm being really weird? Yeah. Why? Like today you're being kind of a, a real bitch, real, real edgy. I don't know, you're different. Whatever. I don't care, I don't. I, I love everybody, no matter what. I don't care. I do too. I don't care. So are you going to hang out here with me? Or? I don't know, I'm, I'm you like... You can hang out here. Just trying to diffuse whatever this energy thing you got going on. I have no energy. I just, I, I'm, I'm sitting here selling tickets. They're giving away the tickets. Well, you're like, I know what you're doing. No, I just said, hey, Sneaky. I know what you're doing. I mean, every time I see you, you're accusing me of cheating or something, uh, dude. Say to me, I don't need this. Go away. Like, just go away. I don't need it, Nico. I don't need it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? We are going to be doing a drawing shortly, so bring those tickets right up front over here, and we're going to be giving away some prizes here in just a few minutes. I would like to say that our team is going to be the one, the winner for this task. I think we're going to win. I think we have a good shot. I think we got a pretty good chance. Well, you know what? I actually... It could go anyway, right? Guys? Well, I just have to see if all the people that we gave them to decide to come. What they think they're going to do at 3 or 4 might not be what they're going to do at 8 o'clock. So I think we gave it a great effort, and I'm really excited about some of the out-of-the-box thinking that we all exhibited. And I think that Thor's got a great shot at uh, pulling this off. So. We came back with five of the flyers left and a sunburn. So I think we did pretty good. And this first one is for the uh, $25 cash prize. And we have Johnny Looney. This is Johnny Looney in the audience. All right, we have Heather Gossel. It's Heather Gossel here. All right, we've got a winner, $50. All right, this next drawing is for the $100 cash prize. I'm gonna take a stab at this. It looks like Shauna Park. And uh, last but not least, we've got a uh, Costa Rica Adventure Package. And the winner of this Costa Rica Adventure Package is... We've got Anthony Morrison. Congratulations, Anthony. All right, folks, well, thanks for participating in the drawing, and enjoy the show. Morning, everybody. Had a late night last night, and now it is time to determine the winner of our execution challenge. So let's just go left to right. Thor, tell us a little bit about your strategy. Uh, we were 15 minutes late getting out of the, the complex. So we got there and we already found when we hit the front gate that I mean, everyone hit the front gate and just started saturating into the, into the fairground. So it was really tough to find anybody outside that, was, that hadn't already been approached or was interested. So uh, we decided to split up. Christine had an excellent idea. She decided that she was gonna go off to the, uh, to the shopping mall. And uh, one of the neat things that we did uh, was I, there was a ticket counter where they do you know, the carnival rides and they'd sell the tickets and you know I'm looking at this thing and I, I said boy that's, that's such an attractive target but I don't have anything they need I don't know what kind of emotion I'm going to instill in the in the ticket taker <laughs> I walked up to the ticket window and said okay how are you doing on your tickets for the uh, for the movie are you, are you good still and she's like what 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 tickets they didn't give you any tickets oh my gosh they didn't give you any movie tickets for tonight no they didn't give me any tickets Oh my gosh. Well, I don't have that many left, but I can give you a few if you want to give them away for free as people come up and buy the tickets. There's no charge for them or anything. And they can fill them out and win some money on the back. Okay, sure. Here's where it's at if you need to show anybody. She's like, oh, I'll, I'll, thank you. I'll definitely give these out. So I kind of convinced her that I was with the fair. So I took the fact that I was dressed in a long sleeve shirt at a county fair, 95 degree heat. You know, why would anybody that's there for the fair be dressed like that? I had a camera guy behind me filming it. What was she going to do? So there was this girl roughly my age, I would say, sitting working a booth, and I said, well, you know, um, so what time are you off tonight? And she just looked at me funny, and she was like, 8 o'clock, why? So you want to go to a movie? And, and she looked at me, and she was like, maybe. I said, well, there's a free movie tonight. She's like, oh, yeah, well, yeah, I'll go to that. Okay. Was she looking at the ring on your finger? Yeah, she probably was freaked out. Like, You're a married man asking me out to a movie. Okay, Jamie, tell us about your strategy and how your team performed. Well, our strategy, we began by looking on the internet to get information on the movie because we wanted to be informed about the product we were giving away. Then we 
decided to go to the fairgrounds. Unfortunately, we had a bit of a slow start to the fairgrounds just because we did do the research. And when we got there, we found the market was relatively saturated, but we did do a good tour of it. We got familiar with the grounds and what places were where. Um, Nico suggested, oh, actually, he generously offered up a trip to Costa Rica, uh, stay at his place for three days, along with some whitewater rafting, etc., as an incentive for people who may not be so interested in over the hedge to get the tickets to try to win a trip to Costa Rica. Charles, tell us about you and your team. Well, since I'm pretty familiar with flying from like being a musician, I knew that unique stuff usually doesn't always work the best. I think hitting what we decided to do was hit. Um, access points. They had to come in, they had to come to the parking lot, they had to come into the gate. Then from there, Jason went out, Henderson went out to the parking lot, Alison went to the other side of the uh, uh, fairgrounds, I went to the other side and we just canvassed everything. Divide and conquer. Yeah. It was a tough challenge. It really was. You had some great partners some which were chosen more wisely than others for your team. Some did not perform very well at all, others did pretty well. I want Charles to win. I would like Thor to win. Well, of course I would like to see Jamie win because she's a woman. <laughs> I think I'm kind of rooting for Thor Shock. I'd like to see Charles win it because uh, so many people are just like pissed off at him because he's on the show already so I really want him to win it. And I've said it a million times before, you know, Charlie, Charles Trippy is here and he brought game. I like both Charles and Neither one of them got any like hard feelings about it. I, I think they're both awesome people. I just think that Thor would make the best JV part. Uh, all in all, it's anybody's game at this point. Jamie, your choice of having Nico on your team was a very good one. His creative concept of offering a Costa Rica trip really paid off. Not only was he the top affiliate, but because you chose him, he brought you to the top. Congratulations, you have won this challenge and you are now hacker safe immune. Nico, good work. You really got out there, you went to bat for Jamie, and you really carried her over the top on this task. And because of that, you are the top affiliate, and we're gonna award you with a copy of my AdSense Premier Package as well. Again, Jamie, congratulations. Thank you to all of you for coming back and for participating as uh, affiliates for our three contestants. We appreciate it. We'll see you guys soon in the judgment room. Here we go. Throughout the competition, our contestants enjoyed delicious food provided by over 20 local restaurants. We'd like to mention a few of our favorites, and when you're in Northern Colorado, be sure to eat at these places. Papa John's Pizza, the Wayside Inn in Berthen, the Cactus Grill across the street from Joel's office in Loveland, and the Honey Baked Ham Company on East Harmony Road in Fort Collins. Bon appetit. It's, it's, it's been a wild ride. I told people you know, back in Lincoln, you know, if you help me do this, if you help by voting for me and supporting me and you're praying for me, that, um, that I'll go there and I'll fight hard for it. I'll fight hard to bring this home to Lincoln. And uh, I've done that. It, it's not been an easy road. There's been some bumps in the way, but uh, I, I'm really hopeful that I've got what it takes to pull this out today, get to the final two. And then uh, whatever awaits me tomorrow, I'll just get a good night's sleep and attack it head on when the time comes. Gentlemen, time flies. One of you is going to be in the final two. So, since you're right in front of me, Charles, you actually performed better on this last task individually than Thor, the penultimate marketer. He's had an incredible presentation and done really well in a lot of tasks. So, you're kind of the underdog here. Tell me why you should be the one to stay and not Thor. Like I've said before, I have a creative outlook. I can bring a different aspect to marketing than I believe Thor could. I think Thor is very stuck in the current business marketing kind of strategy. I think the ideas that I've had are more relevant to marketing in the future. Well, it's, it's a segment though. I mean, there is, you know, in, in your age group, Certainly, it takes a new style of marketing, but right. what about those in my age group? Are they going to respond to? But I don't, I don't think the standard copies are necessary. So you think you, you would have a, a new approach? That I think I work? could, yeah. I think I could bring a new approach. I'd bring a more conversational sales pitch versus a very bold red font and then get smaller, then big again, smaller, then here's five button. I mean, 
you know why that's used? I believe it does work on some people, but a lot of people that I've talked to, it doesn't. Like I see these and I associate them with spam. Even the, the product's wonderful. Like it just because a because a lot uh, there's of there's a lot of spam illegitimate right. businesses have used that style. So you're gonna have to adjust and change because you need to differentiate yourself from that kind of stuff. I mean, when you're sitting there trying to sell it, sell it, sell it, sell it, sell, it, sell it, people know they're being sold to. So if you can somehow camouflage that into a commercial like what they do on television, they camouflage those ideas into like a like a little baby baby story. And then they link it back into the product, and then you're like, oh, okay, you know, that's what that is. And you're, you're selling it, to, you're selling that idea, that brand. And you're through the story. Through the story. The testimonials. If you want to throw a testimonial in there, but like, you're selling it through that idea without actually cramming it down somebody's throat. I've yeah. seen a lot of growth in you since you got here. I have to I've say. seen it so myself, too. From the beginning, you, you are great. Your communication skills have been great all along. You, you're obviously incredibly intelligent. And you, I thought, you were kind of a fish out of water. A dark horse. Yeah. But you've proven yourself. You've risen to the challenges. You've proven that you're not a one-trick pony. That even though you prefer to live in a certain type of space, you do have the flexibility. And you've learned a lot while here. You know, at first I came here to goof around, be myself, whatever. But then I got here and I started listening to the speakers. And taking in all the information, I was like, this is great. I can really do something with this. So I started straightening up and showing you guys I could do it. So, And the one trick pony comment, I was like, you know what, if you're gonna think that, I'm gonna totally prove them wrong. Okay, Thor, you're polished, you're smart, you got ideas coming out your ears. Tell me why I will be making the right decision to place you in the final two and not Charles. Um, I mean, I have to say, Charles, I mean, when I first came here, I, I was like, who is this Charles Trippi? I had never seen your videos before. I didn't know anything about you. And we're like, oh my gosh, this guy's great. This is going to be fun. But uh, at any rate, especially after rooming with him for a while, you know, we cut a couple movies together. Charles is a good guy. And I respect you incredibly. In fact, I was telling Charles, you might have you cut a couple videos for me. Because I do believe the video can influence my demographic, which is a 40-plus male-female demographic. But I don't think Charles's videos, as they're done now, would do that. They would have to be a different video that you incorporates. You think he could do a different video? I think he could, but I don't. I'm not sure that he would be able to effectively target it on his own. I think he would need some insight into the demographic. Well, we're. I'm looking for a JV partner. Yes, it, it's hard to defend a losing position. You know, it's hard to say, well, I'm a loser, but I did my best. I mean, that's not what it's about. But what I would point out is that what you said when you were judging us in there was that you sent an email out to your list and you'll sell some product from that email. I have email, I send emails to my customers as well, but I sell a lot more stuff when they go to their people, when they act as my affiliates, when they talk to their families, for example, and bring those people on board as customers. That's exactly what my affiliates did. That was part of the, of the strategy was to pick a good affiliate. What made you think that Carly and Laura would be good affiliates? This is a situation where we're going into a fair and we're giving stuff away, and Laura's personality, she's bubbly, she's fun, she's perfect for that environment. And Carly, one of the things you have to do is you have to grab people's attention quickly. When's the last time you've been to a county fair that a woman with an English accent approached you and offered you something? For, for where we were at, in, in a county fair in Loveland, Colorado, that just doesn't happen. Right. And so when, when it does happen, it grabs your attention and you say, wow, that's, a, that's an interesting thing. So that's why I picked her as an affiliate. Which I think was a good call. I do. I think both her and Laura were good calls. You guys have such a clear distinction. This is truly black and white for us in terms of deciding which type of marketing is going to be best for me to pursue. You know a good deal about your market, but you're still really young. Being older doesn't necessarily mean you're more mature, it just means you found more ways to screw up. And hopefully we learn from those mistakes and, and we improve and I need to make sure that the person that I'm working with is going to have a degree of humility and they're going to be able to learn from me because I do have experience. And while you think that some of the methods we might use might not work, there might be a grain of truth in that as applied to your market, but some of it may work. And you need to be open and receptive to that uh, because ultimately my goal is to make a joint venture wildly succeed. Thor, you're a bit like a politician. <laughs> you are. You are very eloquent. You have a great presentation and yet you manage to dance around issues a little bit. It's the Thor dance. <laughs> We've seen it several times while you've been here, and I guess what I need to know is 
if I'm gonna be able to fully trust you as a JV partner. Because what I don't need is, is smooth talking. What I need is somebody who's gonna get down to brass tacks and do the hard work that needs to be done. Remember, we're not talking nine to five and you know you clock in, you do whatever it is you need to do and then you clock out and it goes from your mind. The business we're in is more than our work. It is our lifestyle. It is our passion. Your market would be a brand new market for me. Could be challenging. Might not work. As you talk about the 40 plus demographic, that's a market I'm really familiar with. In fact, it's a market that's my base that I've pretty much got locked down. I don't know that I need help in that market. Now, I know you've got other ideas and you might even regret saying what you said, and I'm sure if I gave you an opportunity, you'd, you know, you'd be able to backpedal on that and we'd be, <laughs> we'd be reworking that and I'd be hearing about how you'd be able to reach a younger market as well. I am an entrepreneur at heart. That means I like to take risks. Sometimes those risks pay off, sometimes they don't. But it is partially the thrill of the chase that drives me. And because of that, I am eager to give Charles another chance. Thor, you've done a great job. I'm sorry to tell you, you've been eliminated from the competition. Thank you. And you, my friend, will face off against Jamie Luchuk, and we will find out who is going to be the next Internet millionaire. Of course, I'm disappointed right now. I mean, I wanted to win the competition. You know, came close, no cigar. But uh, I, uh, you know, where else would you be able to develop the number of relationships I've developed with the number of people in the short amount of time I've developed them, and uh, you know, walk away with twenty or twenty-five thousand dollars in awesome products to you know that is going to totally transform the way I run my business and open some new doors to me as well. Yeah, that was the first time I was nervous this entire time, and I don't know why. It's been awesome for me. Um, you know, I wish Charles and Jamie the best of luck. I mean, like I, I meant what I said about Charles, he surprised the heck out of me. I mean, he's an amazing guy. Well, I don't go into things without thinking I'm going to win. So I never, I wouldn't have come here if I thought, oh, hey, you know, maybe I'll make it to the first or second. That'd be cool. You know, I, I came here focused to win and I'm still focused to win. This is going to benefit my Schrock Innovations customers. I think this is going to benefit my blog readers at Thorschrock.com. I think this is going to benefit my family. I think this could honestly change my life. When I came, I don't know that the producers and Joel knew what to expect from me because I mean I don't have a background in marketing. I'm not a name in internet marketing. And now I think they've seen that I, you know I've proven myself that they're looking at me and thinking, hey, if she's somebody I I do a joint venture with. We're so bombarded with infomercials and you, know, you can get rich, you can lose weight, you can do this, you can do that, and it's easy to let all that stuff fly under the radar as another, just another. Yeah, you can get rich, who cares, I'm not going to get rich, I have, to, I have a real job, I live in reality, I have a real family, it's not for me. Uh, one of the things that I learned here over this course of this show is that it is for people. People can make money on the internet, people are making money on the internet, they're making a lot of money on the internet. You know, I was happy when I made you know, twenty or thirty thousand dollars last year on the internet, but uh, I mean, that's chunk change compared to what some of these guys are looking at uh, on, a, on a single day. We're not talking about uh, an ongoing, uh, a single day. And that, those are the kind of inspirational stories that if people actually heard them and heard them from the mouths of people that said, no, man, I was just like you, seriously, I was exactly, I was a car salesman. And if you can go from being a car salesman to being an internet millionaire in less than a few years, there's definitely something there. And it's a skill set. All you have to do is have the right skills, pair them with the right ideas, and then execute. And you can make it happen. For those of you who are watching the show that were rooting for me, I appreciate it. Uh, I really genuinely do. If, uh, if there's anything that I can do for any of you, like Joel said, I have lots of ideas and I'm sure there's lots of people out there that have ideas or maybe have resources and want to partner with me on some things. I'd be open to having those possibilities. You know, I didn't win the big contest, but uh, I guess I came in third, so that counts for something, right? <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Jamie, Charles, this is it. During the competition, you two have learned from some of the world's leading experts. Wikipedia is a social network, essentially. I mean, you know, there's a community base. It's part of the show. Do you normally take really good notes? Okay, so now I've got to make my final decision.
Charles, you, you don't really look like you want it, Charles. I gotta tell you, you don't really look like you want it. My JV partner's really gotta want it, so tell me, Charles, do you really, you really want it? Convince me that you want it. Yeah, I want it. Wouldn't be here if I didn't. I hear you, I'm good with that. I am Joel Calm. I can make you millions of dollars. I don't know, Jamie. I don't know how that's sounding. Doesn't really sound like gorilla business to me. Sounds more like monkey business to me. I don't know. We'll see. Laura. Laura. You're, you're here again. Laura. Laura. Again. If you're gonna mark it like a ninja, you gotta mark it. I mean, come on, people, this is ridiculous. You must be a ninja. Ninja, damn. Ninjas, and then you do this, and you do that, and you have to do this ninja stuff. You have to be a ninja. You have to tell the audience what it is in it for them. Be a ninja. Be a ninja. What are you doing in the freaking rainforest? You're bringing in trucks, you're bottling up water, you're polluting the atmosphere, you're putting up a fabrication plant. What are you doing to the rainforest? Is this really bottled water? Or is are you destroying the beautiful rainforest, the birds and the trees? What are you doing? I got a fish for you. Oh, well, we want some ninja. 